Welcome back everyone. Today we'll take a look at tool change on the Precision Matthews PM25 milling machine, but the idea should apply to many other benchtop milling machines. The PM25 mill that I received has no flats on the spindle to put a wrench to when tightening a drill bar. Apparently the older and newer copies have the flats. I tried a strap wrench on the spindle and they work okay, but three hands are still needed. One to tighten the drill bar, one to hold the spindle, and one to hold the tool. This is even more awkward if using R8 collets because the tool tends to slide out of the collet until the collet is tight. Dropping the tool out of the spindle chips the tool or gouges the workpiece. Holding the sharp tool while tightening the tool it cuts your hand. The belt drive and small motor of the PM25 allows the spindle to turn easily when off. The mill I had previously was a large gearhead mill, and with the gearhead in low speed, the spindle was held in place. I don't understand why the PM25 doesn't have a better system to help change the tools. My solution was to add a spindle lock, and it was one of the first tools I made for the mill. The spindle lock works by sliding a bolt into a receiving collar on the spindle and preventing the spindle from turning. Two hands can easily change the tool now. Some have made spindle locks and install on top of the head but to preserve the existing belt drive and belt guard, I chose to install much of the spindle lock inside of the head. With the spindle lock to change a tool, push the bolt in while turning the spindle. There are two detents on the receiving collar where the bolt will insert. Once a detent is located, the bolt is turned and the spindle is locked. Your hands are now free to turn the tool and tighten the draw bar carefully. While I use an adjustable wrench for tightening the draw bar, an electric driver with a 9mm 12 point socket will quicken the process. The draw bar has a square head and I haven't found a socket that fits it perfectly, but the 12.9mm socket works fine. The PM25 does have a threaded cup that captures the top of the draw bar. As the draw bar is loosened, it presses up against the cup, which forces the collet out and the tool is ejected. This feature may work well with collets, but I find tool changes are faster by turning the draw bar less and gently tapping the draw bar. This approach with the spindle lock works well with the Tormach TTS quick change system. Once the tool is installed and the draw bar is tightened, simply loosen the bolt and a spring pulls the bolt out of the detent. Besides helping the tool change, the spindle lock also helps to protect tools that you would not want rotated. If redesigning the spindle lock, I would integrate a small micro switch that would disable the spindle motor. I've turned the spindle motor on with the spindle locked more than I care to remember. To guard against this, I simply try to rotate the spindle by hand before turning on the spindle motor. If you'd like to make a spindle lock and need more information, let me know and I'll be glad to help. Let's take a look at the design and see how the spindle lock was made and installed. The spindle lock was designed in SOLIDWORKS and to get the measurements I needed I removed the spindle from the milling machine. The lock consists of a collar that mounts onto the spindle, a pin that slides in and locks the collar in place, and a body that the pin threads into. The body is attached to the side of the milling head. After designing in SOLIDWORKS, Fusion 360 was used to produce the cam files. I made the spindle lock before I was making video, so unfortunately I don't have much video of the process. I didn't yet have a metal saw, so I used a hacksaw to cut through this 2.5 inch piece of steel. Is turned and faced on the lathe and a hole drilled in the center which was then bored. The spindle ring was parted and a drill pattern was printed and attached to the outer circumference of the ring by adhesive spray. The holes were spot drilled, drilled to size, and two of them were tapped. The tapped holes receive set screws to hold the collar in place on the spindle. Next, the locking pin or locking bolt was made. This is the only picture I have of it being made. It needs to be turned on both sides and threaded on one end. Pretty simple. The main body is now cut on the CNC mill. The operations consist of facing, contouring, drilling, and boring. 
All the videos of the milling operations were taken on a cell phone. This is one of the first parts I made on the mill after doing the CNC conversion. At this time I had no mist coolant so I used an air gun to evacuate ships. Now the part has been flipped over to do the outer side, and I picked up zero on the x-axis by reaching in with a gauge block underneath that overhang. The gauge block provided a known offset. A lot of chips are being produced. This is an adaptive clearing operation from Fusion 360. The adaptive clearing operation is followed up with the contour operation just to clean up the walls. And finally a boring operation to produce the countersink holes. I like to remove the machining marks using a vibratory tumbler. Add the media, a little bit of water, and some soap. Toss the parts in and let them run for a few hours. The process works well on aluminum. They come out dark, but a little bit of polish quickly brings back the shine. The brass knob was purchased from McMaster and looked pretty crude. A quick facing operation on the lathe improved its appearance. Installation requires the top part of the spindle to be removed. We then need to find the center of the spindle. To do so we can extend lines out from the spline shaft. Taking measurements from the installed collar, we can find where the locking pin will need to be. Mark this location and drill a hole. With the collar installed in the spindle and the spindle reassembled, we can test fit the locking pin. The locking pin needs to be square, and we can square the locking pin by truing up the hole. We then square the body of the lock before using transfer punches. The holes are then drilled and finally tapped. After doing the CNC conversion on the mill, there were several holes that I filled a body putty. I then painted the head of the mill and installed cover plates. This is the video of installing the spindle lock after completing that cosmetic work. Installation is pretty simple, just have to make certain everything's lined up properly. This requires that the locking pin easily engages with the receiving collar and that the locking pin easily threads into the body. To make this easier, fully extend the locking pin before installing the spindle lock onto the head. Align the locking pin with one of the collar detents and then adjust for best fill. The upper part of the spindle should come out easily. The electronics of the encoder will create an interference. Be sure to remove these before trying to remove the spindle or you could damage the electronics. And if you're using a driver to adjust the drawbar, be sure to limit the torque. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll be back for the next video.